So here's an update on the kombucha. It's day five, so on Saturday, that's in two days, I'm gonna go ahead and try the kombucha, see how it's turning out. But I wanted to show you guys something that's really cool that I've never really seen, because I've never done this before. But if you, it's gonna be hard to see through the video, so I'm gonna take the top off and show it to you. Hopefully. That culture is like eating the blackberries and breaking them down a little bit and then it's like bubbling up so remember how we said that a scoby is symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast well, whenever you make bread or pizza dough and you have to get your yeast together it bubbles like that so that's kind of cool like I feel like things are going really well the peaches look super weird now which is cool though and whenever me and my husband smell it um, it actually smells pretty on point with how we've smelled other kombuchas, don't you think, Dakota? Yeah. Oh, it's your first cameo. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> You're so cute. Um, but yeah, it's looking good. It's looking kind of cloudy, which makes sense, because um, that's how I've seen other homemade kombuchas. Um, but there's the culture back here. It's kind of like coming up to the top, and then the peaches are breaking down, and then the blackberries are kind of breaking down, too. It looks kind of funky though, so that's why I just wanted to show everybody so we could compare kombuchas. So, if we try our kombucha and we like it, do we strain it before we store it? That's a great question. I had to research that. It says you do not have to strain your kombucha once you are ready to store it, but you can. I think we're going to prefer to strain ours because... It said like all the little yeasty particles and stuff like that are part of a baby SCOBY, which just means like, okay, so they, let me give you some terminology. The SCOBY itself that you have and start with is called your mother SCOBY. I think they say that because it produces more over time and they call them baby SCOBYs. So the little like yeast particles and the jellyfish looking tentacles in there, that's what we think when we see it. Um, that's part of like a baby scoby trying to be formed. So I would like to strain it. Also, a very important thing is you're not supposed to touch your scoby to anything metal. So that's why they recommend you use a glass jar to make kombucha. And also, if you have to like pull out your scoby with any utensils, use something plastic or glass, but not uh, metal. After we try it, are we gonna let it sit longer than a week? Great question, friend. Thanks. <laughs> um, so what I've read, it says that you let your kombucha sit 7 to 30 days. Um, the less time you let it sit, it has a milder, milder flavor. And the longer you let it sit, it has a deeper, more vinegary flavor is what we researched and found. So the good news is the less it sits... Milder milder flavor why is that so hard to say um but more sugar content but the longer it sits it's a stronger flavor more vinegary but less sugar content so if we like it after seven days we don't have to let it sit any longer but we just have to weigh our pros and cons and look at what we're wanting more flavor less sugar so yeah. it's actually day eight for trying kombucha um our little guy got pretty sick The last 48 hours so we were unable to try our kombucha on day seven which is totally fine because praise the lord he feels a lot better and daddy's real giggly mm. he's having a real big time so here's our day eight update we're gonna actually try the kombucha which we're very excited about it's smelling like really on point and when i say on point she means on fleek okay i mean but it's actually smelling like really good and that sour vinegary smell. I don't even know if vinegary is a word, but you know what I mean. Um, this looks wicked. I did talk to my friend though, and I might have messed up. We're gonna see. We're gonna do the old trial and error here, but um, she said she actually ferments her kombucha without fruit, with just the sweet tea, and then she uh, tastes it to see if it's about like the taste she likes for the kombucha. And then if it is, she'll take it 
and she'll add the fruit and let it ferment another two to three days and then store it like in the fridge or wherever she likes it when she's ready to store it and quit the fermentation process and take her scoby out and all that so we'll see how this tastes it looks like these blackberries got eaten up pretty good and some fun stuff's going on on the top definitely a lot more growth than it was before <laughs> um two days ago was that well day five is when we did the update so anyways so we're just gonna go ahead and we've got some glasses here i'm gonna try to get beneath all this and just get some for us to try So here I am with Don Diego, and we're about to try our kombucha for the first time on day eight. So here we go. Whoa. That's not bad. That's really, and, and Dakota's terms when he says not bad, that means it's good. I love his positivity. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I really do. It'll be better. Cool. Oh, our baby's touching a glass. Round two for making kombucha. This time I'm gonna do what my friend suggests and I will make my tea with the sugar in it and then I'll let it cool this time uh, because if you add the tea and it's too hot by any chance, it could actually kill your scoby since it's a live culture. Luckily, I just did hot water with tea. I didn't do boiling hot water. So this time I'm gonna actually boil some water and then I'm gonna add my sugar, add my tea bags. I might add a couple more tea bags just because of my husband's request. And then after I let it ferment for at least seven days, then I'll add fruit or any other flavorings I want. I'm letting my water come to a boil. This process that I'm doing just right here is very similar to my homemade hummingbird water that I make. So I'll make a video about that and link the video below as well. So I'm gonna do quite a few more this time. Just a little tip. You can try to just loop it around your handle so they don't get lost in there. And then when you're ready to actually remove the tea bags, instead of unwinding each and every one of these, you can just cut them. Like just cut them all right here and get them out real quick. Preferably hold it before you cut them, huh? Might lose them. <laughs> seat for 10 minutes and I may turn down the uh, heat a little too so it doesn't overboil. So here is our previous batch of about two cups of our kombucha. Um, and then here is our sweet black tea. And I'm about to add that because it's cooled off enough um, to the previous batch so we can start making a new batch. So here is the new batch that we'll start fermenting. And if you can see real closely, the scoby here has kind of that almost like tentacle hair like 
growth coming off of it, which just means you have a healthy SCOBY. And that'll help. Um, let's see if we can get a good shot from the top. All of it floated to the top. Here is our new SCOBY, the baby one. It looks kind of like a reddish pink color. Then here's our old one that has the different layers to it. So, so far, so good. Super excited.